So one of the reasons I believe that I've been able to be so successful is because during the years where we had, you know, fierce competition from other shows and other people, I would always say to my producers, you can't run their race, you can only run yours. And you really can only run what you're doing. You can't even worry about your own fellow producers. You can only run your own race. That lesson that Glinda the Good Witch gives to the Wicked Witch of the West when she says, go away, you have no power here, that's a powerful lesson. Because I have seen over the years in so many interviews and even in my real life experiences, people losing their power because you're giving your power to other people. You lose your power when you try to take control of somebody else's energy because you have no power in any energy field other than that which is your own. And your real job in life is to figure out how do you master your field? How do you do that? By consistently choosing love, by living in the space of gratitude and knowing that that power that you feel from time to time, comes from a source that is greater than yourself because nobody gets out of here alone. Nobody. Nobody is making it alone. And when you are trusting in your, when you are afraid, when you are sad, when you are unable to make a decision, when you are challenged, when you are moving in the direction of all that which is fearful, it's because you're trusting in your own power. I couldn't get here by my little bitty ego self. When you look at where I've come from, a little town, apartheid town, in Kosciuszko, Mississippi in 1954, where there were more lynchings of black men per capita than any place else in the world. Where you had to be off the streets, literally, when white people walked down the streets where there was no vision or hope for you as a black man or black woman, other than being a domestic or teaching in the colored school. And my ability to step into literally the flow and grace that I call God is what has gotten me here. And I consistently mind that because having a spiritual life isn't something that you can attain because you already are a spiritual life. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin said, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. I know this to be true. So it's not like you can go out seeking a spiritual life. You already are one. And the real job is for you to become aware of the soul's calling and the spirit that resides in, above, around, and through you. And be about the business of fulfilling that. There is no one else in creation like you. There's nobody like you. And what you've come to do and what you have to offer is like no other, even if they're all doing the same thing. For me, being your presence, your connection to yourself, and that which is greater than yourself is far more important than what you do, but also is the thing that fuels what you do. And I know that one of the things that is so important for what happens here at the graduate school is that you have leaders who are self-actualized and understand what your contribution to change the world can be. You can only do that if you know yourself. You can only do that unless you take, unless you, you cannot do it unless you take the time to actually know who you are and why you are here. Now, I happen to know for sure that every human being comes, comes called and that the calling goes beyond the definition of what your job is. There is an innate, supreme moment of destiny for everybody. And that's why when I was in Baltimore, I could feel this isn't it, mm -hmm. this isn't it. And then in Chicago, after 25 years of success on the show, I started to feel this isn't it, there's something more, something more, something more that's calling me to what is the supreme moment. And everybody has that. And you cannot fulfill it unless you have a level of self-awareness to be connected <clears throat> to what is the inner voice or the instinct I call it your emotional GPS system that allows you to make the best decisions for yourself.
Every decision that has profited me has come from me listening to that inner voice first. And every time I've gotten into a situation where I was in trouble, it's because I didn't listen to it. I overrode that voice, that instinct, with my own, with my own head and my own thinking. I tried to rationalize it, I tried to tell myself, but you know, okay, you're gonna make a lot of money, oh no. And so I am, I sit here, uh, you know, profitable, successful, by all the definitions of the world. But what really, really, really resonates deeply with me is that I live a fantastic life. My inner life is really intact. My, I live from the inside out. And so everything that I have I have because I let it be fueled by who I am and what I realize my contributions to the planet could be. And what my real contribution is, it looks like I'm a, I was a talk show host. It looks like, you know, I'm in the movies. It looks like, you know, I have a network. But my real contribution, the reason why I'm here, is to help connect people to themselves and the higher ideas of consciousness. I'm here to help raise consciousness. I live by the third law of motion in physics, which is Stanford, uh, which is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That is my religion. I know that what I'm thinking and therefore going to act on is going to come back to me in, this, in, a, in, a, in a circular motion, just like gravity, like what goes up comes down. And so what also propels the action is the intention. So I don't do anything without being fully clear about why I intend to do it. Because the intention is going to determine the reaction, the result, or the consequence. In every circumstance, I don't care what it is. Everything is fueled that comes from me really wanting to be a better person on Earth. And this is what I know to be true. One of the reasons why I live such a fantastic life is because I pay attention. I pay attention to my life. And your life is your greatest teacher. Every single thing that's happening to you, every day, your, your joys, your, your, your sadnesses, your challenges, your worries, your, everything is happening to bring you closer to in here. Everything is trying to take you home to yourself. And when you're at home with yourself, when you're solidly there, connected to whatever you call creation, even if you don't call it anything, connected to an energy force that is that has unlimited power for you. And you can connect it to, to that. You, you, you are your best. My greatest, one of my greatest lessons came from a guy who wrote a book called Seed of the Soul. I was doing them on the show and I started talking this conscious and spiritual talk, you know, two months after I started the show. And my producers would all be like, oh God, there she goes again. But I knew that even though masses of people were not tuning in for that, that the whole purpose of that platform was to try to lift people up. And now I have a network and I can articulate what it is I'm trying to do. I'm trying to bring little pieces of light into people's lives. Because what is my job? My job is not to be an interviewer. My job is not to be a talk show host or just to own a network. I am here to raise the level of consciousness, to connect people to ideas and stories so that they can see themselves and live better lives. How do you change a person's life? I had, prior to starting my school in South Africa, I had this big idea that I was going to, emotional, that I was going to take all 100 families out of the projects, and green and green, and I was going to give them a new life, and I was going to buy them homes and stuff. And that did not work. It failed miserably. I had a big sister program that I started, failed miserably. So I realized that for me, First of all, I realized you don't change, as you all are recognizing through the SEED program, you first have to change the way a person thinks and sees themselves. So you've got to create a sense of aspiration, a sense of hopefulness, so a person can see, can begin to even have a vision for a better life. And if you can't connect to that, then you lose. You lose and they lose. And it's just money after money after money. So for me, it's using my philanthropy to do what I have found to be enormously helpful. You know, the light in my life was education. Mm -hmm. So for me, in the beginning when I started to make money, especially when it's published, everybody and their brother, and then you've got to make a decision. Am I going to do what everybody else wants me to do? Or am I going to be led by, by who I really am? 
And I learned, as will happen to anybody who's successful in your family, people start treating you like the First National Bank. And you've got to decide. You've got to draw the boundaries for yourself and decide how are you going to use your money, your talent, your time in such a way that it's going to serve you first because if, you, if it doesn't allow you to be filled up, then you get depleted. So my decisions are now emotional and logical, meaning I choose education, but I do it in such a way that's actually going to benefit the person that I'm serving. And it's not just, oh, I want to help people. Right.